Hey, what is up you guys? So today I am at Anime NYC. And for this video, I thought that it would be fun to uh, invoke a bit of a familiar segment that you might have watched a little bit on this channel before. I'm gonna try to buy some Yu-Gi-Oh packs here. Should be doable. There's usually like vendors and stuff that sell packs and cards and all that. I've got $50 to spend. So I'm gonna see how many packs I can buy for that much. Infinite Forbidden, Battles of Legend, Terminal Revenge, and maybe make a little bit of a profit. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge. Leave a like for Alec, the poor cameraman who's gonna have to keep up with me this whole time. And yeah, let's get into the Yu-Gi-Oh! searching. Okay, so this is Anime NYC. For those of you guys who don't know, I actually really enjoy going to anime conventions. We usually go to a few every year. This is gonna be a very busy video, by the way. You guys, please leave a like or something. For poor Alec, he has to hold the camera during all of this. And also for me, for like trying to navigate through these crowds. Um, anyway, yeah, we have an objective here. The objective, first of all, is to find Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which in years past has been somewhat easy. I feel like fewer booths have Yu-Gi-Oh this year. There are some cool dice booths. Check this out. What Mystic Mountain Gaming, which looks cool. They basically have these, like for people who are into tabletop, many, many custom dice. I wouldn't know anything about this. I Wait, I got Larry one of these. These, uh, this is called the Pounder. It is a die that weighs one pound. And I got it for him, it's like 100-sided and, you know. Cool, we have found a rare empty space to breathe, and now it's back into the fire. This is what an anime convention looks like, by the way, if anybody ever wanted to see. I'm in, like, what I would call the less crowded part of it, and it's still very crowded. Also, a lot of cosplay. Oh my god! Yo, can I hug y'all? Oh my god! Shout out to the world, bro! Honestly, I'm hype as shit to see y'all! Oh, Did, well, did nice. you guys get some Yu Gi Oh cards? Did you guys try getting into it? I'm looking for Yu Gi Oh cards. So they have some on this side over here. Like, oh, okay, over there. Over, yeah, yeah, right Okay, down. sweet. They have singles, they have like packs, whatever you guys want. But, hi everyone! Everybody behind the camera? All right. Hi. <laughs> Love you too, bro. Oh, yeah? Honestly, I wish you guys the best. I hope you guys have a great con. Thank Thanks you. Today. Appreciate right. it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Enjoy the con. Thank you, guys. That was fun. There is a Yu-Gi-Oh! gaming room here. I did bring decks. I guess I won't get to play a duel like on this video because I'm searching for cards. I realized, too, that the, you might have noticed the premise of this video feels a little bit familiar. Larry is not with us today, so I'm like his very bad substitute stand-in. But I still do like to open packs and get cards and maybe somewhat make my money back, I don't really know. The ideal set to find would probably be Infinite Forbidden, but if we're being completely honest, I wouldn't mind opening Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge either. I think that that would be pretty good because that's got Dragon Master Magia in it, which is like technically more expensive, I think, than anything that's in uh, than anything that's in Infinite Forbidden. Because Magia, do you know how much it's going for right now, Alec? Any guess? What? Uh, this place is overwhelming. This is pretty awesome. I recognize Pokemon and a cool One Piece. Picture Chris would like this, most likely. 18 of. Hmm? Are you Paul from PBTS? Yes, I am. Nice Hi, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, bro. Yeah. I watch the channel sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we're just uh, recording a bunch of stuff yeah. around the convention. Yeah, we're so. Nice. so. Are you guys around here? Or like you oh, no. We no, flew right? in. That's why I was. But yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, of course. Have a good day, you guys. You too. Yeah, but watercolor paintings. Awesome. Like I was saying, Chris would probably like this one. There's a bleach one. And uh, honestly, the prices aren't bad either. Anyway, sorry, I just had to stop and show you guys. Uh, we will continue to the Yu-Gi-Oh now. Okay, so this 
is what we are looking for. I would like some Infinite Forbidden, I think would be a, I think that'd be a pretty good one. Are you Infinite Forbidden packs for sale? Uh, not here. Oh, not packs, so just the box? Yes. Oh, darn, okay. Hmm. Okay, I understand. Um. Sucks. So we only have 50 bucks, which means I can't afford to buy a box, but they do have a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh here. I could get a little Legacy of Destruction. What's in there? That's like the expensive card, but he's not that expensive. Was there a Chase card in Legacy of Destruction? Like that's like valuable today? I don't think so. Darn. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you anyway, I appreciate it. Oh, from Team APS. I am, yeah, nice to meet you. I'm sorry, I forgot I, your name. Paul. Paul. Okay. No, you're good, you're fine, it's totally I fine. Your it was really cool to, to see you. Yeah, good to meet Great you too. I appreciate it. Are you buying Yu Gi Oh? Actually, unfortunately, no. You're looking at Digimon. Yes. What? That's. Yeah, actually, actually don't you. fist bump the camera, man. <laughs> not? You don't play Yu Gi Oh. You're not buying Yu Gi Oh. What's wrong with you? Get out of my face. I, oh, I, I'm I done with this. No. no, okay, and that's fair. No taste at all. None whatsoever. Okay, so that was a bust. Uh, well, sort of. They they had Yu-Gi-Oh, but I could only buy it by the box, and we have a budget today, which means that, uh, so I'm back to square one. I have to find a place that's actually selling packs of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Fun. Okay, another quick booth I had to stop and show you guys. This is, uh, yeah, V1 Tech. Look at this stuff. They have, well technically there's like Pokemon cards and stuff, but they've got Yu-Gi-Oh! There's like Dark Magician Girl, Dark Magician. I see Slifer and Obelisk. I see Yu-Gi-Oh! and Kaiba, Merrick. A little bit of everything. They even have bats. With the designs. I've always thought it would be cool if Yu-Gi-Oh! would do like cards that came out of the frames, kind of like how these do. Like, I don't know. I don't know if Konami would ever want to do something like that, but I think it'd be cool. This is an inferior card game. Actually, no, I don't know. I wouldn't know, but this is Union Arena. Um, they're demoing here at Anime NYC. We actually did a demo earlier. So this is the uh, demo area for Union Arena. Take a look at all the people if you want. Look at them all learning how to play another card game that's not Yu-Gi-Oh. Only kidding, actually. I think Union Arena looks cool. It's fun because basically, like, there's just different, there's just basically different anime, and they're all just sort of represented. If I was playing it, I'd probably play Jujutsu Kaisen, if it was up to me. I have impromptu been asked to ask a Yu-Gi-Oh! trivia question, because that's what I did last year when I was here. Uh, first of all, what's your name? Uh, Naoto. Thank awesome. you, Naoto from Persona 4. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, first of all. Okay, my question for you is, there are three Gate Guardian pieces. Name them in order from weakest to strongest attack points. Weakest to strong. Oh, now that's weakest where it gets tricky. Weakest to strongest tricky. attack points. Um, Kazajin at the top, Song of the Thunder on the bottom, and Suijin in the middle. It is Kazajin. Suijin, and then Sangha. So he's headed backwards, oh, but right at the top and the bottom backwards. Okay, which right. means that you don't get anything and you have to leave now. Goodbye. No, 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 <laughs> I'm just kidding. But thank you anyway. Uh, I wish I had a pack to give you. No, don't worry about it, man. Just getting to meet you, you know, that's more than enough of a, you know, nice We can have a picture. Thing. Yeah, that, yeah, that works. great, man. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. All right, Sweet. thank you so much, man. You guys want to get in it. too? Yeah. yeah. So before we talk more about this Yu-Gi-Oh game, I wanted to tell you guys about some other games from the sponsor of today's video, Astra. So you know those services that pay you for taking really boring surveys? 
Yeah, I've used one before. Well, what if you could get paid for actually doing something fun? That's where Astra comes in. You get to discover different games, complete specific tasks within those games, and then reap rewards for it. Specifically, Astra coins, which you can exchange for cash or gift cards. Now, you're probably wondering, what kind of games do they have? Well, don't worry, there's basically something for like every genre. I really like platformers, so one of the games that I've really been getting into is called Going Balls. You basically just have to balance a ball while it falls down different platforms, but it can be a little bit tricky and there's more depth than you might think. Astra even has social features like leaderboards and you can invite friends to play with you. And when you trade in your Astra coins, you can get gift cards for services like Amazon, PayPal, Google Play, and other brands. So if you want to give Astra a try, then all you have to do is click the link down below in the video description or the QR code on the screen. You'll even get a welcome gift of 200 coins. Now it's only valid for the first 24 hours after you register, so make sure that you actually use it. And thanks of course again to Astra for sponsoring today's video. Okay, I think I have finally found a place that has at least infinite forbidden, I saw. It is this anime book kind of place, so we'll see. How much are packs? Five dollars each, two for nine. Two for nine, okay. So nine bucks means 18, so four for 18, six for 27, eight, I can get 10. And it'd be 45. Okay, this is cool. I can finally at least find Infinite Forbidden. He was just telling me that they had Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge yesterday, but it sold out. So. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. We well, need a dozen. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Helps. You're good to go. Enjoy. Appreciate it. He gave me a free pack. So now I think I have 12. So 12 packs of Infinite Forbidden. And now. We open. Okay guys, so I finally made my way to the press room. It's nice and quiet right now. And so uh, I've got my packs. It's 12 Infinite Forbidden packs. I guess I was only really intending to be able to buy like 10 or 11, but maybe I threw in an extra one. Uh, the money cards in this set, if I'm remembering correctly, it's obviously Fiendsmith and Graver at about $9,500, but also um, Mulcharmy Perulia, I believe it was like 60, 50, 60. And then, um, Couple of the White Woods cards. So, one like, one good luck. Larry used to say that. Okay, uh, I'll start with this one. All right, Interdimensional Matter Forwarder. Does look good? Yep. Cool. Okay, so Interdimensional Matter Forwarder. Depressed Bard, which is Depressed Leopard. Depressed Bird. Fiendsmith Sanct. I don't know how many of the Fiendsmith cards are actually used in the, um, engine that could sell for if it's just no okay alec is laughing meteoria drytron new drytron card i actually wanted to build drytrons like as a pure machine ritual thing i don't want to combine them with anything or anything like that gimmick puppet fantastics machine x is one of these new ones uh, is this the one that does burn damage or no i think that's that is one of the ones they run in those gimmick puppets. yeah i know one of them does burn damage okay these are super Sylvie of the White Forest, three and one. Broomy, he reminds me of like a fighting game character. I don't know which one. And Madolce Mini Meowcaroons, very cute. Okay, pack number two. Theme Smith sequence, I know this is actually used. Maiden of the Millennium Moon, Theme Smith Lac Lacrima. People hate this card, this is the one that deals 1200 burn damage for whatever reason. Not really sure why they decided to just attach that on, but it's broken in tournament play. At least at times. Interdimensional matter forwarder. Ooh, secret rare. Millennium Ankh. Yeah, kind of the worst secret you can pull. Kind of the worst secret you can pull. I mean, you play the Forbidden deck. How do you like it? The worst secret you can pull. I said, that's what I said. Pack number three. Service Puppet Play. Medulce Dessert. Fiend's Miss Sequence. Aerial Eater. Goodness. Yeah, okay, cool. It has some focus. Exod Fires of Rage. This is also used in the Exodia strategy. You know what's kind of sad is I've realized that a lot of the Exodia cards are more so used in like kind of just as combo pieces because they can special summon themselves for some life points, but not actually the Exodia deck. Cosmic Tree Ermistil. Dora Dora. I know this is used in. Uh, what is Tenpai. the Tempai? Yeah. I just want you to know your commons are still better than the secret. Yeah, you normal summon it, you get the tempi that can like summon itself or whatever. 
Vesper Gearsu and Dark End of Apparition Dragon. Totally forgot that Light and Darkness Dragon like the gets like support. Back. It's funny, Shining Sarcophagus ended up actually being like a decent little secret, but Millennium Onk apparently not. Ragnarika Sil oh wow, Ruxin special. Um, I got to see beforehand. Look at that. Look at that, Fiendsmith Engraver. That boy went double secret. So I went double secrets, actually. Not to mention, this is... You know, a lot of people thirst after this card. Did you know that? Like, a lot of people thirst after thirst this card. Is, I don't, so but this is $100, guys. That's crazy. Here's my first Fiendsmith Engraver. I feel like this is my first time, like, pulling a valuable card out of a pack in years. Paul, I wouldn't say that, Paul. There is video evidence. You might not. I'm usually not the one pulling the good cards. I gotta go back to that booth and thank him. Honestly, like this is this is crazy. So, question: Should I build a Fiendsmith deck? Do you think I should build a Fiendsmith deck? What do you think? You, the cameraman, and you, the audience. I just realized I don't have sleeves either. Yeah. Does anybody have you, sleeves? Nope. Do you have sleeves? Yeah. Oh, Alex okay. has sleeves. Okay. You have, you, you have Japanese size. I mean, anything will do at this point. Honestly, I just don't want the poor thing to. Beautiful. All right, carrying on. That's the, uh... All right, guys, that's the video. Yeah, that's the video. That's the climax of the video. Now, maybe I'll pull a Whitewoods card or something. That'd be cool. Yeah, Whoa! Ruxin Special. My God, bro. Ruxin Special. Uh, listen, DPH Gindamore, Paralyzing Mushroom, Rukia the White Forest, Aerial Eater, and... Okay, so not... Quarter Century Secret Rare, which is crazy. Not the best one, but, like... Pretty cool, right? So these packs didn't all come from the same box. They can't, but no, they did. He gave them to me from the same box. Okay, so Quarter Century Secret, Shield of the Millennium Dynasty. That oh my insane. God. You, this, the sheer amount of value. I don't know how much this is worth, but like just the fact that it's like two secrets and a quarter century. Dude, imagine if this was like a second engraver. That would be insane if that was the case. Anyway. Does that have to do a question? That is just, oh my god. Okay, I need another sleeve. <laughs> oh, beautiful. All right, we're not even halfway through the packs. Pack number six. It's fall in action now. Yeah. Woes of the White Forest. Dipsy Fiend. Amira Drytron. DPH Gindamore. Beware of the White Forest. Drytron knew the second. Necroquip Princess. Dark End Evaporation Dragon, and Doradora. Yeah, I feel like it, it can't get really better than this, but... That's why I keep going back to them on camera. It's crazy, because we still have, like, six more that packs of this. Hard. We pulled no Ultras. Yeah, we haven't pulled any Ultras. What is the most valuable Ultra in this set? Whitewoods. I think the two good Whitewoods are secrets, but... Anyways, pack number seven. Bean Reflection of the Millennium. Emblem of Salvation, I guess it's a Centurion card. Paralyzing Mushroom, the League of Uniform Nomenclature Strikes. Might want to get a little closer in. I can is pull the cards a, I, up. I lose the uh, focus sometimes. Ooh, we did get an Ultra. This is Wedgu Temple. It's uh, not the best Ultra, but it's an Ultra. What's this one do? During your main phase, place a monster from your hand, your spawn traps. Uh, then place a Millennium Monster into Okay. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Probably useful for the strategy, but I'll take it. Zapper Shrimp, Blazing Bombardment Beast, Dark End Evaporation, Trap Gatherer. This is half a box. I guess I just got all the good stuff in the box. Service Puppet Play. Is this a trap card? Oh, it's a gimmick puppet card. Okay. Madolce Dessert. Cosmo Queen, the Queen of Prayers. Lacrima again. Sassurus? Sassurus of the Sinful Spoils. What if I get a third secret? That would be so crazy. Emblem of Salvation. Fiend Reflection of the Millennium. Fiendsmith Sanct. Golem that guards the Millennium Treasures. Centurion Atri. Atri. Blazing Bombardment Beast. Volmina. Valmonica. And Vesper Girsu. I've been playing a lot of, uh, against a lot of Centurion and Master Duel. They got added in recently, although they don't have any of the, the new cards. Three packs to go. Dipsy Fiend. Ragnarika Selene Snapper. Gimmick Puppet Rogue Doll. Golem. Mimigul Archfiend. People really love this Mimigul deck. I've heard a lot of people say good things. I might actually try to build it. 
I think it's the first time they managed to make flip effects be be good. Flip effects are fun again. Guardian of the Voiceless Voice. Oh yeah, new Voiceless Voice card. I've been playing a lot of this in Master Duel myself. I like this deck. That's ten. This is the same girl from um, You're Finished a couple sets ago. She got a tenth visitor to her like website or something, and then they immediately leave and she gets angry. Oh, so she really is. Like, so like her tenth visitor was a, was a lurker essentially. So two packs left. Uh, the infinite forbidden. I think we've already done pretty well for ourselves. If I see a good ultra, that would be perfect. Depressed bird, service puppet play, emblem of salvation, beansmith in paradise. I guess this is what you'd actually play if you, if pure beansmith decks existed. They don't, but you know. Awesome. All right, final pack. I have to do the Larry special. A little light tap. Valuable. Yeah, I won't be hitting anything good. Or will I? The League of Uniform Nomenclature. Gimmick Puppet Rogue Doll. Bet and Bat. Ragnarok a Selene Swapper. Okay. Magic Colloidal Soul. Or Soul. This looks a lot like an old Yu-Gi-Oh card. Like just the art kind of whole concept. Blazing Bombardment Beast. That's 10. Sangin Kaiho. Pretty strong trap, actually and Moon of the Closed Heaven. Okay, so a recap of my card values. Wedgie Temple, only about a dollar. Kind of unfortunate, but um, it's a field spell for a archetype no one wants. Uh, William Anka, actually about six bucks. I thought it was worth less, so that's decent. And then Quarter Century Secret Shield of the Millennium Dynasty. Actually worth about $27. So not too bad, $26, $27. And then finally, Fiendsmith Engraver for beautiful $100. All right, guys, so that is the video. I spent $50 on Yu-Gi-Oh! packs here at Anime NYC and actually got some pretty good pulls. Went up $84, so not bad. I don't know if I'll really be able to make this like a normal segment, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It's really loud here, so drop a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like Infinite Forbidden, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Past turn. <laughs>